number one. Please note, this first story is from a female's perspective. This actually happened to me when I was a kid. I'm a girl, and I was eight years old when this happened. I grew up with my mum and my stepfather in an apartment in Chicago at the time. My stepfather was a crackhead. I'm pretty certain he used every day. He was a pretty good father, considering he was high all the time. I felt way closer to him than my mum. We spent tons of time together after his morning walks. His habit got really bad. My mother was the only one who could work because he kept getting fired. At the time, my mother had just got some new furniture, a whole living room set, two couches, lamps, end tables, rugs. She even got a new TV. She was pretty proud and happy, mainly because she was able to hide enough money away from my stepfather to buy everything. A few days after she bought everything, my mum and I went to Burger King. We came back to the apartment. My mother opened the door, and her smile dropped. There was absolutely nothing in the living room. She told me to check my things. My bike, all my video games, my TV, and my clarinet were all gone as well. There were quite a few other things gone from the apartment. You already know who the culprit is. My stepfather. Apparently, he owed some people money for drugs. He said he had no choice. He had to either pay up now, or it'll be everything he loves. As you see, his habit was very, very bad. Now to the meat of the story. One day, I woke up to my stepfather calling me. It was pretty early, the sun was just starting to peek into my room. I got up and I heard him in the kitchen talking to someone frantically. I couldn't hear much because my door was closed, but I remember making out a little bit. He said, Man, she's beautiful. You won't be disappointed. I slipped on my house shoes, trying to figure out who he was talking to. I heard one response, but the voice was very deep, so I couldn't understand what was said. It was strange for someone to be visiting our apartment, and especially strange since it was so early. I was tired, confused, and a bit annoyed at being woken up. I opened my door. From it, I have a straight line of sight to the kitchen. I see my stepfather nervously fidgeting, pacing, and talking. He saw me and said, Ah. Here she is, man. I stood in my doorway and tried to give him a look of who the hell are you talking to? He motioned for me to come in. I walk into the kitchen and I see a tall, older white man wearing shades. Looking back, I assume he was in his late forties. He was balding, he had a short beard, and he was dressed very nicely. My father said, Here she is. What do you think? My parents tended to show me off to people, so this wasn't odd to me. The man looked at me, I assume through his shades, and then looked back at my stepfather. My stepfather had the most nervous smile on his face that I have ever seen. My father told me to give a twirl. I wasn't going to twirl in front of this strange guy, and definitely not this early. So he forcefully turned me. He held my nightgown taut so it was fitting against my body, and said, Not bad, right? I pushed his hand off me. This was clearly very, very strange now. I didn't understand what was going on but I knew something wrong was happening. The entire time, the white man said nothing. He just stared at me. My stepfather then told me, you're going to have to go with him now. I frowned and asked why. 
but before I could really start, the white man spoke. He squatted down to my height, smiled, and asked, How old are you? Nervously, I said, I'm eight. Huh, you're a big girl then. Do you like school? I replied, I love school. This conversation, and his smile, made me feel a little more at ease. I look over the man's shoulder, and I see my stepfather frowning and glaring at me. This scared me. I have never seen him with that look on his face, except at suspicious people to warn them not to mess with him. I keep looking back at my stepfather, trying to answer the man's questions, and knowing that I said something wrong from my stepfather's reaction. The white guy glances back at my stepfather while still squatted down to my height. My stepfather looks away in fear. The man stands up, looks back down to me, and says, It was nice talking to you. You're a very smart young lady. Now, go on back to bed. I wasn't used to anyone giving me orders, except at school or my parents. But I knew not to question this guy, and I walked off back to my room. I looked back, and he was watching me. I stood inside my room at the door, and looked back again. He said, close your door and go back to bed. I looked at him, and he smiled back at me, and motioned for me to go on. I closed the door and sat on my bed. I hear the man say something to my father in an angry voice. I hear my stepfather begging very loudly, please, please take her. The kitchen has a door leading to the outside staircase. My window was pretty close to it. I hear the kitchen door open, so I slid my window open a crack. I hear my stepfather repeatedly begging, please, please. The man yells at him, she's a fucking kid. I try to peek out to see the staircase. There were two other large men standing there near the door on the stairs. I then presume that the white guy punched my stepfather. I couldn't fully see the whole scene, but I heard a thump inside and outside and I suppose that was from him falling. The white guy and the two men walk down the stairs to a nice black car parked in the alley. I hear the kitchen door close, and soon after, my bedroom door opens. My stepfather is drenched in sweat. He smiles at me sheepishly, and then casually says not to tell my mother. I just stared at him. He then asked, did I want to go to the park? I said no. He walked away and left the apartment. I sat there trying to put the pieces together. It clicked that my own stepfather was trying to sell me, more than likely to pay off a huge drug debt. Then everything else fell into place. The strange, oddly friendly white man considered taking me. Why would he take me? What would he have done with me? Where would I go? What about my mum? Feelings of fear, anger, and sadness flooded over me. I laid there and cried for hours, thinking about how close I was to never seeing my mum again, and that my stepfather had planned to do this to me. My mother eventually leaves him some years later. I still haven't told her about this, afraid she might lose it. I'm 26 years old now, and it's still hard to think about this without crying. Number 2 Let me start with a little backstory. 
A couple of years back, my stepdad's brother proposed to a woman who took the ring he bought her, which was a huge fucking rock, and ran away to Florida. She returned a few months later with a baby, which she said was his, and that she hadn't realized that she was pregnant when she had left. She told him that she was scared because she didn't want to have to raise a child by herself. I later found out that she had already lost three children to CPS for abuse and neglect. She also said that she was doubly scared that the child would be messed up and harder to raise because she'd been drinking, smoking, and who knows what else the whole time she was pregnant. He was apparently desperate for a family, since his first two kids wouldn't even speak to him because he was an alcoholic waste who couldn't even hold down a job. So he took her back, and they got married. This poor child spent pretty much every day alone in its crib, sitting in its own filth, in the dark, given a bottle every few hours, and little to no attention or stimulation otherwise. This house was almost literally a shack, with a huge open hole in the foundation, which must have been at least 10 foot across and 10 foot down, with exposed pipes, and no guardrails around. There was also an active road on one side of the yard, and a good 10 foot plus drop into the water on the other side. Neither side had a fence. My uncle and his wife threw parties pretty much every night, drinking, smoking, occasionally people bringing meth. The police were literally being called all of the time. However, because of the family's long and historied relationship with the police, he was not really held accountable for things. Granted, the cops watched them both like hawks, but they never really got into any serious trouble. Now, on to the main story. Well, one night, my uncle and his wife got pulled over for weaving all over the road. She was in the driver's seat, and he was in the passenger's seat, holding the child on his lap. There was no car seat, and they were both hammered. My uncle had somehow gotten it into his head that because she didn't have a license, that she would get into less trouble if they got caught. The first thing he did when he sobered up was call our house in a panic, begging us to volunteer to take his son if CPS took him away, so that he'd still be able to be in his kid's life and not just lose him to the foster system. After much discussion, my mother and my stepfather both said yes, and they took in the just over a one-year-old. He screamed for hours on end, followed by silent, almost catatonic fits. He wouldn't make eye contact. He refused to be held, especially when fed. He would yank on the bottle until he could hold it himself. He was unable to keep formula down, and later had an issue with food. We found out later that that was a nervous reflex. My uncle got visitation rights, but the wife signed away rights to parenthood. She was leaving my uncle, and apparently wasn't interested in staying if they didn't have a child together. My uncle visited at least once a week, usually in the company of a friend, and both would reek of alcohol. He played rough with his son, and dropped him on his head twice, despite my mum's desperate pleas to be more gentle. He repeatedly harassed my mother by following her in public at a distance to keep an eye on his kid. He didn't live in the same area, and had to drive out to do this. One night, I was alone at home with the kid. I heard someone pull up in the driveway. Looking out the window, I saw a grey truck I didn't recognise idling in the driveway. A man in a baseball cap was sitting in the driver's seat, just staring at the house. I ran downstairs and locked the doors, both front and back, and I kept the phone nearby. There'd been talks of my uncle losing his rights to visitation because of how he'd treated my mum, and he'd threatened to send friends over to keep an eye on us. The truck eventually left, and I told my mum when she got home. 
This sort of tension went on for months, including a particularly uncomfortable night when he had one of his friends come to a church event and the guy wouldn't stop staring at me. He was late forties, missing teeth, filthy and smelling of stale beer. He began to show up regularly with another friend. The big shock came when, early one morning, the caseworker, who had somehow become enamored with my uncle and didn't believe anything we told her about him, phoned us up and was frantically apologizing. My uncle was on the news. He and one of the friends he'd been bringing over had both been arrested. Apparently, he had kidnapped an older woman, stripped her, and had been keeping her as a sex slave in his place for several weeks, with his friend living with him. A friend of theirs from out of state had visited, and they had offered her to him for money. He waited a week before reporting them, but the cops finally had a solid reason with tons of evidence to come down on him. He'd been keeping the woman drugged and drunk, beating her, hiding clothes, and keeping her chained up in a back room. He threatened to kidnap and do the same to her teenage daughter if she tried to call for help or tried to escape. Both he and his friend are currently in prison, and my adopted brother, now bright-eyed, excitable, and nothing like the cold and inhumane child that originally came to my mother's house, will be four years old in April. Number three. Please note that this final story has been verified by the official moderators of the subreddit Let's Not Meet through evidence submitted by the original poster. My mum left my dad when I was nine. I have three older sisters. My dad was an abusive alcoholic. He used to beat us all, especially my mother. He would twist hickory switches together and bake them in the oven before beating us with them. My mum finally got the courage to leave. We stayed in a shelter for a while for abused women and their children. After my mum saved up enough money for us to move, we moved into a mobile home. Our first night in our new place, two of my sisters and I are watching TV. My mum was in the kitchen, and my oldest sister was cleaning out the bathtub. My dad came through the door and put his finger to his mouth, saying, Shh. We were very afraid of him, so we didn't say anything. He went into the kitchen and said, Carrie. My mum turned around and he showed her a gun. She screamed and ran down the hall towards the back door. He told her if she didn't stop screaming, he would kill the kids as well. My two sisters and I run out the front door to our neighbor's house. We told them what was happening when it dawned on us that our older sister was still inside. She managed to escape about a minute later. When she heard our dad's voice, she laid down in the tub. My dad shot my mum five times, killing her. My oldest sister said he went back down the hall, calling our names. That's when she jumped up and ran out. I'm 38 now, and he's still in prison. Hi guys, Lazy here. Thank you so much for listening to this video, and I really hope you enjoyed this one. Um, if you noticed any weird background noises at any point during this episode, that's probably because there's a storm going on outside where I am right now. Yeah, it's really raining super hard at the moment. Ah, you gotta love England, right? <laughs> anyway, um, make sure to follow me on Facebook and Twitter, and of course subscribe and join the Lazy Legion. I think today we've just hit 150,000 subscribers, and that is mind-blowing, guys. Thank you.
Thank you so much to everyone who supported me so far. And I'd really love to get to know you guys. Well, you know what I mean. I've read all your stories that you send in to me and, you know, the dialogue that we've got going on the other social media outlets and YouTube itself. And it's been a really fun journey so far. And here's to another 150,000 more subscribers. Let's hope. Fingers crossed. Anyway, as always, make sure to check out Anthony's artwork via the links in the description below. And you'll hear from me again very, very soon. Until the next episode, guys. You stay spooky. And remember, the best things happen in the dark.